Hello everyone, welcome back to Lobes and Letters. This is my knitting podcast and I'm back with another episode. I have a few things that I want to show you today. Quite a lot of works in progress. Um, more than I would probably like, but um, it's all giving me comfort right now. I am actually in isolation at the moment for a week. Um, here in Melbourne, Australia, those are the rules. So I'm feeling okay. Um, if I need to cough, I'll try and edit it out. But for the most part, it's been very mild on my part. Um, the hardest part is probably been having to stay at home, but then again, I am pretty much a homebody at heart, so it hasn't been that bad. And I've got all this knitting and yarn around me to keep me company um, and to help keep my mind off things. This morning I got up quite early and I did some reading. I started reading um, a book about Zen and the art of simple living by a Japanese monk. And it sort of reminded me that I need to, you know, try to stick to a routine, try to do things on a regular basis to help my body sort of regulate. And I guess doing this podcast is one of those things. Um, I have talked before about wanting to set up more of like a routine in the past and I really like that this is part of that routine and part of just sort of acknowledging how awesome it is to have a craft I can rely on, having something I can do with my hands, something that brings me peace and gives me comfort um, and keeping track of all the things that I'm making and um, being grateful for all of that as well along the way. Um, and thank you for being here and joining me on this journey because it's a journey. Um, the book I read this morning reminded me of sometimes it's not the act that is what is important, but the act of, but actually repeating it and the repetition is the lesson. Um, which you know, we have to be adults, we have to do the same things every day sometimes, we have to keep cleaning the house keep brushing our teeth, keep looking after ourselves, looking after our family, and sometimes it does feel monotonous, but there's always a lesson to be learned in everything, and that's what I'm trying to find. Um, you know, I'm still trying to learn how to be an adult after all these years, and it is going to be a long journey ahead of me, but I guess that's half the fun of it, and half of the fun is trying to master some sort of art, but in the meantime, we have knitting and our crafting and our making um, and, you know, all those things that we lean back on, we rely upon when things get hard um, to help us along on that path, on that journey. So, yeah, I guess that's a bit of what I've been thinking about. I mean, when you're stuck at home and you can't really hang out with friends, there's a lot of time to just think and knit and... Uh, read and do all those things uh, that you normally wouldn't do. So yeah, that's just what I've been thinking about recently. I guess I should start by showing you some things that I've made as well. I am wanting to get back to monogamous knitting, um, as in just working on one project at a time. I also have been looking at ways to um, I do have like a, I'm quite frugal at heart um, and I want to be able to think creatively and explore ways to do things on a budget. So I watched a video by the Crimson Stitchery about uh, how to like knit and crochet on a budget. She had some helpful tips and I think one of the first ones or the first one was to just work on one project at a time, you know, do your swatch um, and figure out what yarn you want to use, really print out your um, pattern if that's what you want to do and immerse yourself into that one project and knit it until it's done and leave in all the ends and then really enjoy the finished product before you move on to the next one. I think that in itself is sort of motivating to get onto the next project and stuff. Um, and although it does feel it can get a bit monotonous um, and that's why I, I kind of do like to have a sock going at the same time as a big project 
um, I think it's an important part of our practice so that we're aware of the resources that we're using, the financial as well as like, I mean, wool itself is a resource as well. So being aware of that and being mindful of what resources we use is all part and parcel of uh, making and crafting and I want to be more aware of that. I know that I have been probably spending a bit more money than I usually would at this point. Um, I'm just sort of at the stage where I know that I will probably go into hibernation after the baby comes and it will be very comforting to know that I have a stash of yarn and needles and patterns and things by my side ready to go at a moment's notice. Um, but I do, I mean, I don't want my stash of yarn to get out of control. So I also wanted to be aware and be mindful of what I am purchasing from now on. And, you know, I'm going on maternity leave, so I want to be able to feel like I am sort of, I mean, that I'm not wasting away um, money either because I won't be working and yeah, it's all just, it's all part of the same, same philosophy, same sort of ideals that I always sort of try to achieve and strive to conquer, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, so lots of, I have lots of sock yarn that I'm looking down at right now. I'm very grateful, very happy that I'm able to have that um, and I will be very conscious of what I buy in the next few months leading up to when baby arrives. <clears throat> the only thing right now that's on my wish list is maybe some undyed sock yarn to maybe dye while I have a few weeks off. Um, I feel like that would be a really, really fun activity and one that I've been wanting to do for a while. So maybe that will be my last yarny purchase, crafty yarny purchase before baby comes and I won't get it right now because I just bought some soft yarn um, but I'll maybe delay it for a few weeks um, and see where we land. But yeah, um, yes, let's get into showing you what I've made. So, um, this is the first finished object. It took me a long time to motivate myself to finish it. By a long time, maybe not that long. I mean, some things I still haven't finished and it's been years, but um, this is something I made for my grandma. It is a shawl. I don't know if you can see it all. It's a very big shawl. I haven't blocked it yet. And I should try and do that. Maybe I'll try to do that today before I give it to her. At some point, um, it took nearly four balls, maybe three and a half balls of yarn. Oh, it's very big, very comforting. I, oh, it is the Sunday morning show by Spice Tricot, a free pattern. I make really nice patterns. There's um, this other sweater I want to make that is inspired by the designer Missoni, I think. It was the one that the nanny um, Fran Fine wore a lot on the show. Um, but there's like a sweater with like zigzaggy looking stripes. But anyway, this one was a big shawl. It was a big project. Um, oh, but it's so warm. I think my grandma hopefully will really like it. She can use it as a shawl or as a blanket. There is a line of bubbles that's meant to be here before the twisted rib edge. But oh my gosh, bubbles are not fun knitting. Uh, I don't know. No one told me... It, it wasn't that fun. I mean, there was another podcast I watched, Anna, Anna, her name is, I'll um, try to write her name down below. Um, she did the same shawl and, was it her that did it? There was someone that did it um, and they did the same, the bobbles. Uh, at the bottom but it's like by the time you get to this edge it's like 400 stitches across and the bubbles would just take forever and I did one bubble and then it slid off my needles because I was using the um, Knit Pro Knitter's Pride Knit Pro Zings um, the interchangeable needles and they're metal and they're just they're so slippery and it just slid off and then I lost my stitches and it was just a debacle so I did one bubble and I was like 
no, this isn't happening. So I skipped the line of bubbles. I just did an, two more lines of stockinette instead. Um, and then did the rib and then I cast off. Um, this was done with a size 4.5 millimeter needle. And it's said to bind off loosely, but I didn't really, really want to do any sort of special bind off like I would normally do like the Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off. But I didn't want to do that. So I went up to the next needle size I had, which was a six millimeter. And I put that on one end and I bound off with the six millimeter needle instead. So yeah, this is the huge shawl that I will now block and give to my grandma. It is made of um, a wool I got half price at Lincraft and it was a little scratchy, which is why it wasn't the best or the most fun thing to work on. I'm hoping it softens up a little bit, but I don't really have high hopes that it will after washing, um, but it still is very squishy and it will be very warm because it's all wool. Um, so I'm looking forward to giving that to her and I hope she gets some use out of it. Uh, I don't know if giving her a huge shawl is the best of ideas because she is a hoarder. But, you know, it's a huge shawl filled with huge love. So um, I think it'll be okay as an exception. Um, yeah, and she doesn't know that she's getting it. So it'll be a nice, nice surprise. Nice surprise. So that is, I think, my one and only finished object today. Um, oh, no, actually I have another one. Toddler socks. Uh, my little baby toddler. This is a random piece of yarn there. She is getting the socks from that ball of yarn that she loves so much. I'll show you how it looks. She always grabs it out of my yarn box and asks for something. So I made her a little pair of socks, just stuck in it. Um, a magic loop because they're too small to use the 25 centimeter circulars. The first lock I did have has like a little hole um, where I pick up stitches. So I made sure to try and negate that by picking up extra stitches and knitting two together a few times, which I feel like kind of worked on the second one. I don't think I'll fix this little hole. I don't think it'll make much of a difference. She doesn't always wear the socks I make her, so I'm mindful of that. Um, I'll try not to make her too many uh, in the future um, because she'll grow out of them anyway. Um, but she really liked this yarn, so how can I say no, right? So that is a pair of socks. Like just a toddler pair, it doesn't really even count, does it? But it's always nice to work on. I did a three centimeter cuff, knit two, pearl two, uh, I think nine centimeters all together for the leg, and then roughly about the size of her foot for the foot. So yeah, that is two finished objects. It feels nice to be able to like show you and then like feel like the slate is clear and I just can keep making after that. I actually have more work in progress than I thought I did. So let's start with this big one here that is giving me a lot of comfort and joy right now to work on. I have promised um, Ash a sweater for a long time. So I'm making this single malt sweater by Maxim Sear or Max the Knitter. Sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. Um, printed out the pattern as you can see. And I have started on the yoke, so the top part. Um, any modifications I've made so far are it, the. Oh man, I just restart this um, this collar section so many times, but it felt too thick when I did it. Um, the recommended width or length, so I ripped back a little bit and made it just a little bit shorter, so that um, I don't know, it looked less like a turtleneck or looked less bulky. Um, and I had to do, I had to rip back a few times. So I kept making mistakes and I think I have made a few, but I think we're on the right track now. It was one, wasn't one of those like super mindless knits, but like it's got a nice rhythm to it now. And now that I've done quite a few rows, I sort of am into the routine, I guess. Um, 
the pattern will be sort of more ingrained into my mind. Um, and I think it'll look really nice. I'm using this Bendigo Woolen Mills. I think it's a 10 ply. Very, very soft wool. So that's partly why I love knitting on this. Um, my interchangeable metal needles. And um, the colour is a nice like muted blue, which is called Shadow from Bendigo Woolen Mills. And it's very... Affordable yarn, it comes in 200 gram balls and, and I've bought three of them so hopefully they'll be enough. It should be enough. I'm making the size three for my husband and I really hope he likes it when he gets it. I'm also making him, what a lucky guy, hey? Um, I think I'm the lucky one <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Don't tell him, he doesn't watch these anyway. Um, which kind of, ma kind of matches this blue and there's these blue accents in here that kind of match um, a sock, another Regia sock yarn. I just love them because they just feel so hardy and durable. Um, he's Getty. He wanted like a long leg. So that's like about a 20 centimeter leg on this one. Um, I nearly finished the foot on the first sock. I um, haven't really been feeling it to be honest. I really kind of want to make colorwork socks. Um, but I should finish these before I start on a pair of colorwork ones. There's a free pattern that I've been eyeing that has a bit of like a Latvian braid in the middle of it, which looks really fun. Um, yeah, so yes, these are probably the two things I'm working on. No, nope, there's more things I'm working on at the moment. Let me just reset and get it out. Um, We'll put this here as well. Uh, another thing for my little toddler. This has been in the stash. So speaking of, of using stash, this I've had this for a couple of years. Originally, my mum was going to make it, but uh, she didn't really take to crocheting. So now I have it, and it's just been knocking about. Um, it is a kangaroo and a koala, and the kangaroo has like a little joey in it. This is from Spotlight. It was only $25, which I think is quite a bargain for like two and a half toys and you get everything you need. So the stuffing, the needles, the pattern, even a tapestry needle and a crochet hook. Um, it's all in here. Um, and I'm just gonna make a mess on the floor, I think. The only thing that I don't like about this is, this isn't gray, this should be, Grey koala, but it's very white. Um, but that's okay. It's my first Amigurumi toy, um, and it's been very interesting and fun to try and figure out what I'm doing. There is, I've done one ear. Maybe I should work more on this today. I've done two. Oh, let me unmove this out of the way, sorry. Two of these hands. I've done the body. Oh, I'm working on the koala first, by the way. Um, I've done a couple of the accents. I've started on another ear, I'm making a mess down here, and the head. So, my first mistake that I did was. Oh, I've completely sealed off this head too. So, this is the head. I feel like it's a little bit like flat, but anyway, stuff the head. And then um, I figured out that by decreases they're leaving, I guess it's a good thing that this is like a light yarn so you can't really see the stuffing, the white stuffing on the inside, but um, it does have, it's quite gappy inside um, with the decreases and I realised I was doing the traditional decrease when there's actually a special amigurumi decrease um, that I just looked up on YouTube and it means that there's less, less holes. Um, less gappiness for your stuffing to poke through. So now I'm doing that on the other body parts and it'll be smooth sailing, I think. Um, yeah, so I've done the head, the body, two arms, uh, most of the ears. So I just have to do two more legs. That's it. I must be nearly done. Oh, and I've done the nose. I just need to figure out how to embroider on some eyes. Yeah, so that's my koala that I'm working on. This is like when I was like stuck in my bedroom. Uh, this is what I did and I watched Nigella and it was a grand old time. 
We had a grand old time. It took me about a day to do all this, so um, it'll probably take me, I should be finished in the next week or so if I want to pick it up and work on it. So all of that can go back in the box and then I can make the koala. I mean the kangaroo once I'm done. Um, is that all that I have for my holistic progress? I have been thinking a lot. Yeah, I think that's it. <clears throat> I have been thinking a lot about this blanket that you will be seeing now for the last time because I am going, I have decided to frog it, to rip it out um, and start again. I am going to do a crochet baby blanket with this yarn instead, at least with a couple of the balls of yarn. Maybe only even one. I don't know how much it's going to take, but I have a lot of this yellow yarn, which I love this mustard color. So I'm not that upset about it. I was thinking about how I can be more mindful about using yarn and the resources that I have. And this project just isn't bringing me as much joy as I would like it to. And I think it would bring me a lot more joy if I took it out and made a crochet blanket with it instead, which will go a lot faster and be a little bit thinner because of course I'm holding this yarn double. I have been dreading pulling it out because I did hold the yarn double and I've never pulled out a project like that before and I'm scared that the yarn would be all tangled. But I think we find people have done it before. Um, I'll be happy to get all these stitch markers. I think there's about I don't know, 10 maybe stitch markers here that are just sort of hanging about. I'll be happy to get the needles back. Um, yeah. I will maybe use that as a project for today. And I guess it's a nice sort of calming project to do too. Something you don't really have to think about. Something I can watch, something in the background. Um, I did start watching Maggie. It's a new series on Disney Plus and I really liked it. The vibe is so good. It's like um, this really nice feel good sitcom um, with, you know, one of those life lessons that need to be learned um, through, you know, an entertaining and good looking cast. So that's all you want, right? Um, but yes, I will sit down and pull this out slowly and mindfully and then I will have yarn to use for a crochet baby blanket. Um, there are so many things that I want to do. Um, but I think it's important to do them, try to do them, one or two at most at a time. So I need to finish these other projects before I start doing more. Um, it does get a little bit overwhelming if you keep doing more whips at once. I know it doesn't, I know it doesn't um, affect some people, but for me and what I think is a good use of my time and resources, one step at a time is probably best. Um, we also all, yeah, we were all outside yesterday and doing some gardening, which is really nice to get back into as well. Uh, and yeah, I guess for the rest of the week I'll just be chilling at home, cleaning, making home as comfortable as possible while we are stuck in it. I am looking forward to having some time to relax and time to spend with my family. Uh, before this I made a potato gratin, which I've been craving. Um, it's about a kilo of potatoes in there, but I think it will probably be finished in one meal because it's that good. Um, I'm using a recipe by recipe tin eats, a really simple one, mostly cheese, butter, and cream. I mean, like, how can you go wrong, right? I'm really looking forward to putting that in the oven and eating it. Oh, and lots of garlic too. I mean, garlic is good for the immune system, right? <laughs> Um, it's going to be uh, a few more days in isolation. Uh, it also, uh, doing isolation and reading about like Zen and mindful habits, um, it reminds me of, I think, I don't know where I heard it, but someone saying that 
prison terms, like long prison terms. I mean, I have never experienced in this, but they said that um, if you do the same thing every day, it makes the time go faster because it just feels like one long day instead. So hopefully um, it won't feel like too long being in isolation. But having said that, I love being at home. I love seeing my friends as well. Um, it's just a little bit of time that we have to get through and just make sure that everyone is fighting fit and healthy before we go out into the world again. But yeah, thank you so much for being here and for watching and for, I don't know, just, just spending this time with me. I really enjoy listening and watching to podcasts while I knit. Um, so I hope that I've kept you company. Um, I know that it feels like I'm talking to a friend or multiple friends out there and it really helps me sort of think about, as I said, I've already said it before in this podcast, but it helps me think about what I'm doing and being grateful for what I have and I just sort of wanted to be part of the knitting community. Um, I don't have many friends in real life who knit and or crochet. Um, I do have some very special friends that don't knit or crochet and still watch my podcast and that is probably the best thing ever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you're having fun out there knitting and crocheting and I am with you in spirit. Or if you don't do either, I'm also with you in spirit because you're the best. And I hope you have a great day. So thank you. Have a great week, month, year. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.